feeling to be here. Amen. Amen. No, I don't practice anything. What I say is comes from my heart. And I think most of you know it. I will tell you that everyone here is truthfully in my heart. And you are family. Everyone is family, right? Everyone. Everyone here. You can't replace that. Yes, you have your own family, but you have the family that has God in it. Right, man. Every one of you I know, and every one of you are a part of me, and I hope I'm a part of you. And ne next month I'd be here 25 years. And it's just, I don't know where it went. But it's, thank God I'm here. We've gone through a lot. We've all gone through a lot. And look where we are. Right. We're talking to each other. We can jump around. We can dance. Whatever. But thank God for what we have. You can't go to any church and get what we have here. Because they come here and tell us that. They say when they walk in the doors here, they feel the love. Right. And I know I feel it every day. Oh, so. And I can say, and people know this, yeah, how much I do love them. Praise God. God. And I wish nothing for you. I wish I can help you with everything I got. Yeah. I can give you all the love I have. I can give you all the prayers I have. Right, brother. And I'm blessed to be here. And I want to thank you all for being a part of me. I love you all. Praise God. 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 Twenty-five years. Well, that that did go by. That's wonderful. That that's wonderful. I'm glad to be here tonight. I'm glad to be doing better. I praise the Lord that I'm healed tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't God wonderful? Yes. He, you know, He's never failed us, has He? No. The Lord has never failed us. The Scripture said that uh, He said, "Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world." Praise the Lord. And that gives us great hope tonight, doesn't it? It does. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. And I, <clears throat> I mainly rose tonight to just uh, make everyone welcome. We're so glad to see each one here. And uh, I'm looking around to see if we have any visitors, <coughs> any new ones among us. If you're here, we certainly don't want to overlook you. We're so glad. That everyone is here tonight. Isn't it wonderful Amen. to see Amen. everyone here? Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. And we, how many believe that we are going to have a wonderful weekend? Amen. 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 How many believe that he is still on the throne tonight? How many believe he's still in control tonight? How many believe he's real tonight? Oh, yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. And uh, yes. also, we, we certainly miss those who aren't here, don't we? And because they are part of us. As Brother Liebman said, uh, our family. Yes. And when, a, when part of our family is gone, part of our, our strength is gone, we miss them. Yes. So we want to remember each one in prayer tonight. Amen. Uh, Brother Marlowe and Sister Marlowe. Uh, is up the country in um, Illinois tonight along with some others for the roads and uh, 
Brother and Sister Hand, I believe. There may be some others, I'm not sure. No, that's all that, that are there. And then um, we also have those that are, are sick among, among us. And we want to remember them in prayer, don't we? Amen. 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 All of those that, um, and, and I appreciate uh, the church tonight. I really do. Because a couple of weeks ago I was very ill. And um, I couldn't get around. Um, I had this uh, case of uh, very dizzy um, thing come on me and to the point that I, <clears throat> I didn't even trust myself to drive. I didn't even want to try to, it was a struggle just to get up and walk across the room. But uh, uh, the Lord intervened and, and uh, I'm here tonight. And, uh, I appreciate the prayers of the church. So many have said, uh, Brother Don, we prayed for you. And I said, I know you did. Because we can feel the prayers of his people, can't we? We feel the strength of one another. And you know why we're here tonight? To gain strength from one another. To love one another. To bind together. To lift his name yes. up. Oh, yes. Isn't that right? Amen. Praise, right. Praise the Lord. We know he has great power. Yes. We know he can do anything. We believe him. If he said it, it's true. Yes. If he said it, it'll happen. We can believe him tonight. Amen. 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 So I'm thankful for all that. And then um, uh, Sister Durrett has a sister. And uh, I can't remember her name, uh, Sister Red. Give us her. Barnes. Barnes? Mrs. Barnes. Yes, over, uh, well, over, down in Jamaica. And uh, she's ill. And uh, we want to remember Sister Durrett's dear sister there in Jamaica tonight. And uh, there, there's many, there, there's others. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, Sister Shannon is here tonight. Yes, Lord. Isn't it wonderful to see this? Yes. Another miracle, another answer for prayer. Amen. Amen. Another great testimony. Yes. Another point that we can say the enemy has been defeated. Amen. 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 And it's so good to see you, Sister Shannon. Isn't it wonderful? Yes. Amen. Battling cancer, but God is greater than the cancer. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I feel a wonderful spirit here tonight. There's a wonderful spirit of praise. We have a lot to be thankful for. You know, we really know that God's real tonight. Amen. And that he's able to do these Amen. things. Come on, Praise the Lord. He's not form. He's not fashion. And we aren't either. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 And uh, I don't see Sister Loretta here uh, register. Let's remember her in prayer. See her name on, on the list here tonight. Um, uh, and then also, uh, I believe... Uh, 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 your cousin Bill, his wife, Christine, Brother, Brother Harrison, has cancer. is has battling cancer also in, in Tampa, isn't that right? Yes, she's in Tampa. And her name is uh, Christine Harrison, and uh, this is the wife of, uh, of Bill, who was here with us yes. many years, and, and is a member of the Harrison family, yes, amen. a cousin, in fact. And how many remember Brother Bill? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. And uh, so we want to remember his wife, Christine. Yes. And then Renee, we miss Renee, but yes. Sister Pat's here, but we miss Renee. Yeah. And she's sick tonight, so we want to remember uh, as we take these prayer requests before the Lord and uh, because we believe him. And as we pray tonight, saints, let's believe in our heart, you know, uh, and I know you will. Let, let's, let's call on the Lord. For these needs and, and also many others that, that are listed on the board here tonight. And uh, and, and those uh, unspoken requests. Yes, uh, there, there's a, always needs among us. Yeah, but God's Amen. able. Brother Don, yes. I wish you would remember Brother Vincent Branham, you know, Reba and Vincent, those, those two. Yes. Yes. We had a stroke. Hold on. Brother Benson there in, in Port Charlotte. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Brother Sir, Ron, yes. Also Sister Santos. 
Sister Sam. Blake Hospital. Blake Hospital tonight. We miss her. Brother, mm -hmm. could you remember my mother? Yes. Brenda, she's not doing well in her body. Yeah, Sister I think Brenda. Things wrong. Remember Sister Brenda tonight. Amen. Hello. Yeah. Uh, we want to uh, be in congregation to remember Brother Brian Jeffrey yes. and his mother, uh, Penny Sheena. She's in the hospital all weekend. She has her back home now, but she's facing surgery again, and they don't even know if she can make it through. So he is really down, and he just really yeah. wants Sister Jeannie, that's Brother Brian Jeffrey's mother in the hospital. And uh, the Lord knows all about that. We can remember that prayer request. Amen. Thank the Lord. All right. Yes, Sister Sam. Wow. Yeah, Brother Eddie. Oh 
we've had an exciting few weeks at our house. The Lord's been pretty amazing. And uh, one night I was uh, studying the Word of God. I studied late in the morning. And the Lord gave me a revelation of the rod that Moses used. And uh, the rod was very, very amazing. Because when Moses was given the commission to take the, the Israelites from Egypt to Canaan's land, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm a stutterer, and he said, hey, by w- which way am I, how am I going to do this? And the Lord said, drop your rod, and it became a snake. He said, take it by the tail, and it became a rod. He said, by those same miracles will you lead the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt. So anyway, what I was saying is the Lord said to me, he said, get a rod, get a, a cane. <gasps> And he said, put scriptures on it, yeah. okay? And he said, you use it for your finances, for your healing, for whatever you need. And so I did that. The Lord told me to do it. And I put words of declaration on this on the cane. And I put uh, the rod is for assistance, it's for comfort. It's, 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 it destroys yeah. <laughs> uh, the enemy. Amen. And... The, in Psalm 23, it said that thy rod and thy staff, it comforts me. Amen? Amen. And so the Lord quickened this to me, and he said, when Moses stood on the rock Horeb, the Lord said, I will be with you on the rock Horeb. Smite that rock, and water will come out. Well, I wish you could have seen me today. I walked all over the house with my rod. Because it works. And we were facing tremendous, uh, a big bill the other day. And we live by faith with our business. And we were facing a bill and we had to pay it in a day. And we said we had payroll and you know how that is, Matthew. And we said, Lord, we need a miracle. So right after he told me about this rod, I took the rod and I said to John, get over here. And he held this rod with me. And when you put it above your head, you feel the anointing power because we anointed the rod. We had all the scriptures on it. And I said, Lord, I've made a covenant with you because he is the rod. Amen. Do you remember the scripture where Joshua was against the Malachites? And Moses said, I will be with, with you with my rod. Yeah. And then David, when he killed Goliath, he was in armor and he took five stones. But what did he take? His staff. Woo! Hallelujah. Yeah, right. He took the staff. The rod goes through the whole Bible. And then in Mark 6, verse 8, when the Lord sent the, he sent the disciples out. He sent them out, and he sent them two by two. And he said, take only your staff. Amen? Because this staff is important. It's full of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That is why Moses struck the Red Sea, and it opened. But the Red Sea would have stayed open until he struck it again. Because the Lord needs a person. He needs a body. He needs a body. And so you can have the staff now. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, he needs a body. And he's made us for his purpose. That's right. So when Moses used the rod, he did miracles. The water turned to blood. Life came fast. And you know the story of the plagues. And that was because he used his rod. I'm telling you something that's real tonight. So you need to listen to me. Because the rod is God himself. He, is, he stands in covenant with us. And you know in Psalm 23 when he said, he said, thy rod and thy staff, it comforts me. Do you know that the crook of the staff, it pulls in the little lamb that wanders away and takes it back to the real mama? Because that's the comfort part. And he brings you closer to the bridegroom. The actual shepherd brings that lamb back. That's the rod that comforts me. Amen? Amen. So anyway, so God needs a body. He needs us to be well. So when we're sick, we are not in God's plan. Because God does not like sickness. Can you say amen? Amen. So he needs a body. And so he needs our body. And we need it well. So when it's worn out and it's tired, we are no longer legal in this world. So he takes us home. Does that make sense? I'm telling you something deep tonight, maybe. 
because when your body expires, you're no longer legal. He takes you home. But when you're well, he has, called, he has uh, had a program to cause healing for our bodies. So when we sit, he created a program. Come on, guys. Program. And it means healing. That's right. Yeah, right. So why are we sick? I just got a good report from the doctor. Yeah. Everything was perfect. Thank you. My yeah. blood sugar, everything. And I'm a diabetic. And I never claim that I'm a diabetic. But the Lord made a a miracle. She said, what happened? I said, God healed me. I took this rod. And I laid it on my stomach. I laid it on my body. I would pray on the bed with it and say, Lord, I take this rod in faith because the rod speaks of miracles in the Bible. And if you see this concept, it will change your life tonight. And so what happened was the Lord wants us. He wants our bodies well because he needs us. Amen? Amen. So what happened was Jesus died on the cross and he went, whew, he said, it is finished. And he blew out his breath. And, and you know who he blew out? He blew out Christ because he was the man and he was dead in the grave and he was lying in the grave. And if you did not take care of that, he would, he would still be dead. But anyway, Christ went to Gehenna. He went down into paradise and uh, not into paradise he went to Gehenna to <laughs> Hades and he spoke to Lucifer and Lucifer said what are you doing here sin kills a man he said yeah I know it killed Jesus he's over there up here and he went to Lucifer and he took his the belt and he took the three keys he says I've come for something come on he said I've come here for something I've come for death hell and the grave Come on, you're all sitting and looking at me. You take the keys. He took the keys from Lucifer. And he said, I'll be back. And he, and he opened every cell and he took uh, Abraham and he took Moses. He took them all up to paradise. Christ did. Okay? So Gabriel says to Christ, this is my story. He says, how can you go back down when you don't have a body? You're not legal in this earth. Come on, come on, come on. You've got to see this. So eventually he says, I've got to leave. I've got one more thing to do. So he goes back to the grave and he walks in and suddenly the Lord Jesus jerks him. Christ goes back in him and he is raised from the dead. And that body was back. And so there he went. That, that's the story of the body. We need, he needs us as a body. He needs our bodies to be healthy. Right. Because right. if it's not, we're illegal here. That's right. We are illegal when we're sick and we've almost gone. Because then we expire and he takes us home. But we want to be legal and we want to be well and we want to be well all the way through. Because he needs us to impact the nations. Yes. And how do you impact the nations? You use the blood of Jesus. You use the rod. You use whatever's in the scriptures. Amen. And you use that and you say, Lord, use my body. That's why when you ask for healing, you ask for my sake. You say, Lord, for your sake, I want your healing. I'm sorry, for your sake. Okay? And so when you say your sake, he'll heal your body. So this rod really worked for us. So we need to pay this big bill. Yeah. And I said to John, let's take this rod. We lifted it up. We said every scripture that I pasted on it. Yeah. And we kept it in the day. And we did it again that night. By 6 o'clock that night, God brought in $2,500. Because of this rod. Because we believed him. Because it's a God of miracles. So don't you tell me God is not listening and he's not working with us. He is working. And he needs our body well and strong so we can impact the nations. So we can fulfill our destiny. Amen? Amen. Who wants to fulfill their destiny tonight? Because I really see that if you say, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, they really do comfort you. Amen. Amen. And Moses knew about that rod. David knew about the rod. Yes. And when he told them in Mark 6 verse 8, get that scripture up, Mark 6 verse 8. It's up there. Okay, it's up there. <clears throat> okay and he commanded them, okay, that they should take nothing for their, uh, for their 
journey. Save their staff only. No scrip, no bread, no money, no purse. Why did he say that? Because the rod was important. He needed Moses. He needed a body for the Red Sea. Moses had to strike it to close it. Amen? Because he couldn't be helping because he was God the Father and he was no longer, he didn't have a body. Do you see this? He has to have us to fulfill our goals in him. We are needed for the kingdom and we needed to be in a healthy body. So when we say we're sick, God can heal us because he created a program called what? Healing. Amen. Amen. Do you see this? I got this. I got this. So when Lucifer said sin sin dies, he says, he's on ice and I'm here. Amen. I get so excited. He's on ice and he goes back to Jesus and he raises him and Jesus says, I thought you forgot me. (laughs) Amen. He did not. He did not. But Christ rose him from the dead and it said, by that same spirit, he will raise us from the dead. Yeah. Didn't it say that? Yeah. And that's why it's called the body of Christ, not the body of Jesus. The body of Christ is the, is the legs and the arms of all of us all over the world. The body of Christ has never been called the body of Jesus. Because the body of Jesus is a man. Christ is the anointed one. Woo, I get this. Hallelujah, I get this. I'm excited. So we have been studying the word and we've been praying and we've been believing God for miracles. We need to pray for Marlene. She's very sick, but God is going to work this out. She has a test Monday. We're going to pray that they find what this is. And I want you to all grab hold of God for her tonight. Okay, in the mighty name of Jesus. She even bought a rod and she put scriptures on it. And she says, I cannot believe how fast it works. That's right. It works fast. Because miracles, when Moses used the rod, miracles happened all the time. Okay? So the rod is very, very important to the Old Testament and the New Testament. Amen? Amen. So who does God need? He needs our bodies well, healthy, and strong. Amen? Why? So we must impact the nation so we can fulfill our goals. I don't know if you got this, but that's okay. I had to tell it anyway. But if you didn't get it, that's too bad, but you have to get this because he needs our body. So when he expired, the Christ left and went to Lucifer and pulled out Abram and Moses and all of the patriarchs. And he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And then he took them to paradise he came back and went to, ha- to the grave, and then he went back into Jesus, and Jesus said, I thought you forgot me. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I thought you forgot me, but he did not. And Jesus was raised from the dead. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you, I told Sister Marlo about the rod. She said, Sister Gloria, I believe that. I believe that. So if you take the rod and you put some scriptures on it, you anoint it, and you use it. I'm telling you, it works. We used it again today, didn't we, honey? Yeah. We used it. John, John will come. He'll say, where's that rod? <coughs> when we have a problem, and we'll pray over it, and we'll, we'll lift it up to the Lord. And, this, and I had a lady call tonight before we came to church. We had prayed, and she gave me a credit card for a, a certain amount. And then she said, and by the way, I never met the lady. I bought your book and I have it with me. I can't wait to read it. So that's what the rod does. Right. Yeah. So Amen. when you believe yeah. in the power of the Holy Spirit and you obey him, it's not that that actual cane is anything special. It's that it's obedience. Okay? It's obedience. And so we need to just get along with the Lord and listen to his voice. Because he needs our bodies. We, do not to, we don't need to be sick in this church. We sick, we sleep. And if you have communion, you won't be sick. I'm honest. I'm straight and to the point. You need communion in this church so that you don't sleep and you don't get sick. And so, therefore, you need to obey the scriptures and you won't get sick. And so, when you get sick, you just claim the 
power of the Lord and you claim the blood. Amen. And that's, that song is, I, I claim the blood. Amen. And I claim the blood tonight over sickness. I cast sickness to hell where it belongs. I cast Lucifer out. I cast out the spirit of infirmity and sickness here tonight. And I send it to the pits of hell where it belongs. And I ask the Lord to rule and reign in our lives. I pray for Dean, Lord. Heal Dean totally. Heal Sister Shannon in Jesus' name. Heal her, Lord. And we just need a, a fire under us tonight. Because this is important what I was telling Praise you tonight. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. I heard, what's that lady's name? Donna. That Donna that just started coming here. Right. Uh, she called today, or not today, yesterday. And she said she had been down to Brother Stewart's church and she said the, the other night her and her husband was there and how much they enjoyed being at Brother and Sister Stewart's church. And she said that to tell the church here that she had been here, she's been here twice, and that she really loves this church. She says you can feel the love when you come in the doors. And she said she really, really loves this church. And she said that her and her husband both are going to come back and she said they're going to go to Brother John's church and she said when they went there she said it was just like you could just you could just feel everybody loving them and she said she hasn't felt this in 18 years and she said when she walked in this church and she felt this she said it was like an anointing she hadn't felt in so long and she just wanted me to tell the church that she loves everybody and she just appreciates everybody and their love yeah. Yeah. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all doing good tonight? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. You love the Lord? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I love it. Yeah. Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. He kept me for 40 years here. Yeah. 40 years. 40 years. I love to talk about him. Yeah. This man named Jesus. Yes. Yeah. I like the fight that he fought. I like the battles that he won. Yeah. I like the grace that he gave me. Amen. I like the peace, the joy that he gave me. Yeah. I'm glad I understand what it is to have joy. Yes. To have peace. To have the victory. Yes. Uh, not that I won the victory, but because he did. Right. And he said, I can have peace. Yep. Yep. Not as the world gives it, but as I give it unto you. <coughs> and uh, I found out what his rest was. That if I could stay in his rest, I'd have peace. We sang a song just a moment ago. It says, 10,000 years and we'll just be started. 10,000 years and we've just begun. 10,000 years and the battle is over and the victory's won. And then we stand up and we say we have the victory. Well, my. Part of my 10,000 years must be over with. <laughs> Maybe he was talking about somebody else 10,000 years. Maybe the victory was won before the foundation of the world. Hello. Yeah. Maybe the victory was given to someone named Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he gave it to this world. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he brought it with him when he came. Yeah. Maybe he had to go through all the things that he did, be born of a, a virgin. Had to have a body like under our body. Had to suffer all the things that right. we suffer and more. Amen. That's the way I look at things in my life. Praise God, praise God. I feel things that I used to not feel. I used to have troubles, battles, arguments, 
All kind of things rage within me. Now, you might not agree with what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it anyhow because it's the way I feel. <laughs> I didn't stay here for 40 years by myself. No. I didn't stay here 40 years without examples around me. <clears throat> and I know who the supreme example is. I pick up the Word of God and I read about it. His name is Jesus. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Talks about his life, his death, his resurrection. Amen. Amen. How he got out the grave. Talks about how he got in the grave too. Yes, right. it does. How he got in the grave. Yes, he didn't get in the grave because he sinned. Right. He got in the grave because he didn't sin. Right. People hated him. Right. Couldn't stand it. Couldn't take that walking around amongst them. Just a few. Just a few. So I look at my life and I said, are you tired of living the way you've been living, Brother John? This was a few years back, and I said, yes, I am. I've been in the church a while. I listened to the Word of God. I felt the Holy Ghost move. I've seen the Spirit of God fall on people. I've seen the outpouring of the Spirit of God. I've seen it bless the whole church. I've seen six, eight, ten people get the Holy Ghost at one time right here. I not only saw that, when I came in here in 1979, there was a there were people here filling these chairs. Yes. You weren't here yet, Brother Butch. I just came in the door. You came in right behind me. But it was something about those people. We talk about Jesus. Yes, it was Jesus. Yes. It was his powers, his word, yep. his love, his grace, yep. the Spirit of God. But it was manifested in the people. That's what I saw. Right, amen, amen. I saw the manifestation right, of God, of yeah. Christ, of the Spirit of God right. in people's lives. Yeah. I just didn't hear words of people saying, I love the Lord. I saw that in action. Oh, praise God. I saw it affecting people's lives. Right. If you listen to what I'm saying, you'll hear words that you hear your pastor say all the time. Yes. Effect. He told me one time, Brother John, he says, don't sit out there on that pew for 35 years and not affect the person sitting beside you. Right. <laughs> said, do, do something, right or wrong. Do something. Well, I made a decision. Just as everyone, just like every one of y'all make decisions. you not, I made a decision to serve the Lord one time. I said, yes, Lord, I'll serve you. I haven't been perfect since I said that, but I haven't gone anywhere. All right, I Lord. haven't left. That's right. I've stayed. And I know what's kept me. I know what's kept me here. There's something that got in me that came from God called love. Called love. Not just love for God. Not just love for Jesus. Not just love for the church, but love for one another. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. I want to become a part of something that was real. Brother Don Lumber <clears throat> uses that word a lot. Is it real, church? It's yeah. real. He real. says it all the time. It's yeah. real. He'll yeah. ask you that any time he stands on his feet. Real. Yes, it's real. It's real. It's really real. Yeah. Jesus was real, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. My yeah. Lord, he was real. Yes. He, was. he was a real man. Amen. He really is a, he was a real God, still is. Hallelujah. 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 He's the one that's still keeping the church. Yes, he is. I'm not in the, I'm not in darkness. No. I don't live in the past. No, I'm not in the wilderness. All those are servants, 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 teaching. That Brother Marlowe has taught on here in the last year, two years, three years, four years. Some of them recently. Yep. Who is this I see coming about the wilderness? Yes. Leaning on the, arm. leaning on her arm. Arm. Love. Arm. Not the arm, on the blood. Yes, the love. Yes. Thank you. It's a church. Yep. It's a church. Yeah. What church? The church. Paul said in Ephesians. 
Husband loves your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might present it unto himself, a glorious church. Come on now. See that word right there that changes a lot of things. That word glorious. A glorious church. Without spot, without wrinkle, without any such thing. That's just not but it's a special. Glorious. That he's gonna present to himself. Amen. So it makes a difference, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Amen. Know what you're striving for. Uh-huh. Brother Rob Bowman, when he gets on his feet, I remember three, four years ago, we've been in Port Charlotte five years. It's growing. Yes. Some wonderful people down there that God brought together. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. I appreciate everybody that comes down from Braden and works down there and helps us. Yes. Lifts us up. God. In every way. I ain't never had nobody come down there that didn't do right. I didn't agree with everything that come down there. I didn't agree with everything that was said. But you know one thing I saw and one thing I didn't see? I never saw a bad spirit come down there. I saw a good spirit come. I saw them bring it with them. I saw them let it out. I saw them reach out for other people, their lives. People that didn't understand what they understood. Not trying to be something in themselves, but to lift up the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lift up the glory that he has in this earth. Yes, amen. Isn't that what it's about, church? Yes, it is. Loving one another amen. as Christ loved the church. Amen. Caring for one another. Not just, well, I heard about somebody who's in trouble. I heard about somebody they had a need. Uh-uh. That ain't what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't teach that down there. I tell my, I tell the people of God that come down there, the ones from Port Charlotte, the ones that come from here, or wherever they come from, look for things. Look for somebody to help them. Look for a need in people's lives. Be a wise, be a wise person. Care enough about other people to forget about yourself. Long enough to reach out a hand. Didn't that, doesn't that sound like somebody you read about in the Word of God mm-hmm. named Jesus? Yep. 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 Always looking. Always caring. Yes, I know he knew the mind of man. He knew everything that was going on around him. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I've watched this right here. Yeah. This church that I'm part of. Yeah. This ministry that I'm a part of. Yeah. This body of people that I'm a part of. Yeah. I've watched over the years. I just watched People come in with a long hair, the short hair, short dresses, high dresses, no dresses, pants, shoes, open toe clothes. I looked at all that. That's all right. That's all right. People come in different sets of mind. Some know them, some don't know, some will know, some maybe never know. But that ain't my place to judge. My place Amen. is to love somebody. Yes. Receive them with open arms. Amen. Say, come unto me, all ye that heavy labor and holy labor. Hey, Jesus ain't the only one who said that. He no. did. But, brother, we're talking about a body of people that's got Jesus as their head right here. Yeah. Doesn't that make that body something? Yeah. Huh? Come, on. Come unto me, Amen. all you that labor and a heavy labor, and I'll give you rest. I've been trying to give rest to people, trying to give them understanding of the Word of God. I know that if I preach the Word of God, if I do what I need to do, and I do it with the right spirit, and God has called me. Whether anybody believes that or not, it's still true. God did call me. All right, yeah. God did take a man and slap me in the chest and almost knock me in against the wall. One night on Thursday. That really happened. That's when God called me. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 It happened to me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. I've been there five years. Yeah. The church is wrong. Church is multiplied. We got about 20, 25 people. You know, I've never taken an offering in five years. I've never taken an offering in five years in that church. And I don't plan on ever taking one. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you something. I've got it. The Lord has brought together a body of people down there. Yes. People with understanding. 
some young, some old, some mature in the Lord, some not so mature in the Lord. And then we don't have a lot of time. We travel from here down there. It takes about an hour and ten minutes to get there. By the time we get there and get set up and everything, we're in church a few hours. we got to be back here. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? i got to be back here. Yeah. Ain't no choice. Uh -huh. I made that choice 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know if I move down there and make it my home, my wife, turn my house over to my son, whatever, and put them all on there, take care of all this up there and forget me, just forget about it. And I go down there and get a house or something, yeah. Be a little bit different. But it's not that way. I have a responsibility here. I have the love of God in my heart for this place. Not for just the place, but for what's here. The church, the people of God, the spirit of God, the living God. A place where there's a sign out, son, says a living Christ for a dying world. I believe that. Well, I want to know where the living Christ is. Have you ever asked yourself where the living Christ is? Is it right here? Isn't this where the living Christ is? Or is it just words on a sign? Is it just something to say? Did you put a lot of time in thinking about that, Brother John? No. I thought about it. One day the Lord gave me understanding. You know, 40 years I've never gotten anything of my own. I've heard the word of God preached. I've read, I've studied just like any other brother. But every time I got something, it was because God revealed it to me. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Spirit of God touched me. Amen. Gave me understanding. Amen. I like, uh, there was a time I didn't like the word humble. Or humble, however you want to say it. <laughs> low down. Not beat down, no. but low. Take the low place. Don't come in and take the high seat. Somebody will come along and say, I'm fine, you get out of here. Come in. Jesus was that way. That was one of his attributes. Yes. He was humble. Yes. Amen. I like that. Yes. I found out it's something. Something about that word when you take it in. You take it in. Like you uh, like I eat salt bacon all the time, see. I eat it every single day of my life. I love salt bacon, so I take it in. It does something for me. It keeps me alive. Doctors say don't eat salt, but I know better. There's people in the world will tell you don't be hungry. Stand up for yourself. Die. Yeah. Find out. You let the Lord fight your battles. You'd always be on the winning side. You'd always come out on top. Amen. 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 So I got up tonight for one reason. I haven't been up in a while. For y'all that don't know me, I'm Brother John Stewart. And I love you. I'm part of you. Amen. Nobody brought me here but the Lord. Nobody paid me to stay. The price was paid on Calvary. That's right, amen. So that I could come and be a part of it. Amen. And I want to be a part of it. Amen. 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 I appreciate what God's done. Yeah. Yeah. Not just in my life, in the life of others, the ones that were here before me. The ones that were examples to me. To me. I ask questions. I didn't I don't get uh, well I won't say that. I wonder about things, see. For a long time, I listened to all the brethren in the church preach. I watched people in the band. I watched the music being played. I watched all the things that took place in the, up on the platform, out in the congregation. I seen the tide come in, the tide go out. I seen the wind blow, and I seen the wind calm down. I've seen God work. And I've seen man try to help God and follow the leading of the Spirit. And I've seen it at times when man fought against that. Yeah. Yeah. And, but you know, those things, that song we sung, 10,000 years. Yes. Well, 
I'm, the battle's over. How many of you can say the battle's over? Battle's over. Can you say that? And know what you say it when you say it? It doesn't mean you're not going to have another battle. But the battle is over. I know who the victor is. And I know if I keep him in my heart, if I keep him in my mind, if I keep him in my spirit, he that keepeth his spirit is greater than he that taketh the city. You can either be a whipping post for somebody to beat on. Yeah. And I ain't talking about your brother and your sister either. There's one inside of you that'll beat on you from daylight to dark. Yeah. Yeah. It'll work on you good. Yeah. Yeah. But when you know who the enemy is, when you know who the victor is, Amen. when you know where the power of God is, Come on. and you keep that alive in your life. Come on now. Son, I want to tell you something. You can walk above all things. You can rise up above all the things of this life. All the things of this world. All the things of this world. See, I read scriptures a little bit different than a lot of people. First John said there's three things in the world. Does it say that? I don't know whether it says three things or not. I know it says this. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's what's in the world. And I believe you can, everything that's in the world, you can encompass in those three categories right there. He said, don't love the things of the world, and don't love the world. That's where you get the victory, when you get to understand. And you look around, and you have somebody stand up in your service, and they testify about the years that they served God. The years that they've given their life to God, the years that they prayed, the victories that they fought, uh, the battles that they fought, the victories that they won. It does something for me. It makes me know that Jesus is still on the scene. Jesus is still working. Jesus is still worthy to be prayed. Worthy to be lifted up above all things in your life. So tonight, church, I just want to let you know that I'm alive. Right. I'm alive and well in Christ. Uh, Sister Glory said, Revelations, I'm he that was dead, and I'm alive, and I'll live forevermore. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah. I used to be dead, right. but now I'm alive, right. and I'm going to live forevermore. Yeah. 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 Appreciate the Lord tonight. Don't you appreciate the Lord? Amen. Didn't you appreciate a man of God that brought you those words yeah. to where we could have life for our soul? Don't you appreciate yeah. that tonight? Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Yeah. Let's ask the Lord. Let's just give him some praise right here. Let's just give him a minute. Let's give him some praise right here. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him some praise right here. Come on, you can give him. Let everything that have breath do what? Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a song. Just of course, I just want, but I got a scripture. I won't be here too long because I know it's getting late in the evening. But I just wanted to say how great God is. Isn't yeah, God great yeah, tonight? Yeah. Amen. From Sister Gloria admonishing us right down to the man of God admonishing yeah. us right here. Isn't God mighty in this place yeah, tonight? Yeah, yeah. Isn't God great in this place? Yeah, yes, yeah. Sister Gloria. I do believe there's healing power in this place tonight. Yes, I do believe there's anointed power yeah. in this building tonight. Amen. The Bible said, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me tonight, Amen. don't they? Amen. So your rod and your staff is here to comfort you Amen. tonight, isn't it? Amen. So if you need something from God, this is the place to be tonight, isn't it? it is. Amen. All right. Many other places you could be in this world, isn't there? Come on, preach with me, y'all. That, that, that guy was here the other night. You preached with him, so preach with me. Right? As many places you like to be in there was tonight. But you knew there was safety here tonight, don't you? You knew that in multitude of counselors, there's what? There's safety here tonight. There's another scripture that comes to me that says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. 
I wasn't depressed when they said it's time to get dressed for church. No, I jumped right up and I said, Lord, I'm going to go to the house of God where my rod is and my staff is. And I can worship God in spirit and in truth. Is that right? Amen. Somebody here tonight needs something from God, don't they? Didn't come here to look at one another. Didn't come here to, I love you. I'll fellowship with you afterwards because I'll be hungry and you can buy me something to eat if you want. But right now we come to worship Jesus, didn't we? There's souls that need to be touched here tonight. There's people that need to reach God here tonight. You want to become a part of a family that Brother Les Liebman was talking about? You become a part of the family of God right here tonight. You become part of something that will never leave you nor forsake you. This right here will keep you right until the end. Amen. In the midst of everything. Amen. Amen. There's a quick course. I don't know what's going to take place after this. But this song comes to me. I'm only going to sing it a couple of times. Because I do got a short scripture that I'd like to read. But this song says. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God. One more time. Sing it with me. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. Isn't your God mighty tonight? We don't serve a weak God tonight, do we? We don't serve a God that's spineless tonight, do we? We serve a God that can do mighty things here tonight, don't we? We don't serve a God that's quit on us, have you? My God has not quit on me. Has your God quit on you? My God has not quit on me. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, Sister Gloria, what a mighty God we serve. When he wanted to part the waters, he parted the waters. When he wanted, he just is there. If you're in need, guess what? He's there. Because he's a mighty God tonight. He's a wonderful God tonight. He's an awesome God tonight. He's not a depressed God tonight. Our God is not off in a corner somewhere depressed because of the things that are happening in the world. Oh, no, God is not depressed tonight. He's not depressed because he's looking upon you saying, I'm healing your body this very moment. I'm healing your spirit this very moment right now. Amen. Because our God is great tonight. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read this scripture. Is it okay, brother, if I read this scripture? It says this. In Zephaniah 3 and 17, it says this. How many believe the Bible tonight? Do you believe the Bible is true? This is not just a book that we pick up because we're bored and want something to read, is it? This is a book that's life for our soul. This is something that will save a lost person when they're in need of despair. This is a book that will reach somebody in the middle of the night, Sister Gloria, when you need something. You can pick up this Bible and begin to read it and know that Jesus will be in the midst of you tonight. Here's what it says. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is what? He's mighty tonight, isn't he? He will do what? He will say. What else will he do? He'll rejoice over thee. With joy. With joy. Not sadness. Not depression. Not hurt. Not any other thing. But with joy. He'll do what? He'll rest in his love. He will joy over thee with what? Singing. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Cry out and shout, you inhabitants of Zion tonight. Are you inhabitant of Zion tonight? Are you inhabiting Zion tonight? Are you excited about the kingdom of God tonight? I am. When I sing, I get happy, as you can tell. I love to sing. I can't sing very well, but I'll give it my best because it makes me happy. It makes me excited. When I get depressed, what do you, I sing. When I get something down, I sing. Because the Bible said, of you maketh a joyful noise. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Glory, amen. He said this next verse, I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. I want to go, let me go one more. If it, one more, brother. Here's what it says in 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 2 yeah. and number 7 says, The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and he lifteth up. We could be telling you tonight about a God that just, he only shows up when he wants to. He, I'm, t I'm not telling you about a God tonight that shows up. You, I'm telling you about a God that can lift you up and make you rich or he can bring you down and he, whatever you need tonight, he can do it for you tonight. Our God is in the midst of us tonight. The song says we bring the sacrifice of praise. We bring it in this place tonight. We lift him up tonight. We worship him tonight. Hallelujah. Are you glad you came tonight to worship him? Come on, are you glad you came to worship him tonight? Amen. I so appreciated the men that I listened to my, my dad when he spoke a while ago. I was so appreciative of the men that have paved the path and have stood here the test of time for me to be able to be here tonight. Somebody like him that has said, I'll stand for the church. The, the world behind me, the cross before me. You may try to take it, but we're not going to let you take it. We're going to hold up our staff. You're not coming in here, devil. You don't have a place in here. You don't need to be in here. We're driving you back tonight. We're pushing you out of this place tonight. Amen. If they'd have quit, where would we have been tonight? If they'd have closed the doors, what would we have done tonight? Brother Harrison, if you said, I'm tired, I don't want to do it no more. Brother, I wouldn't have a place tonight to stand here and worship God in spirit and in truth. I wouldn't be able to stand here and sing a new song. Of Moses and the Lamb, Brother Troy. Amen. Yeah. Oh, but there were some people that prayed on their knees. Yes. There were some people that said, Our God is yes. in the midst of thee. Yes. He's Amen. not going to lead us. He's going to the waters, but he's going to part the waters. Amen. And we can go across Amen. dry shot. Because the pastor Amen. preached Hallelujah. to us, we came out of the wilderness Lord. tonight. Yeah. Are you out of the wilderness? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I know I am. Yeah. I'm out of the wilderness tonight. No more to return to that God-forsaken place. I'm going forward looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith tonight. I'm looking to Jesus, whence cometh my help tonight. This world is lonely, you guys. This world is lost tonight. People need help tonight. They need more than just money. Right. They need more than just, right. just some food. That's right. They don't need that. They just need they they they, they just need some more. Yes. We went on that little trip with wherever we down 14th Street a couple weeks ago. Brother Butch and I was talking to a few people. And they we begin to tell them about Jesus. Yeah. We begin to tell them, and they said, "Oh, we're so needy. We're so hungry." But they reach in their pocket and pull out a brand new cell phone. Oh, yeah. It's got a nicer cell phone than I've got. Yeah. Brother, they need, they don't need all of that. What they need is Jesus Christ. Yeah. If they're hungry, they're going to go eat. Yeah. I can promise you that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, brother, what we as a church need to do is know that Jesus Christ is in the midst of us. Yeah. And we need to know that he is the author and the finisher of our faith tonight. Our God is not spineless. He's not going to quit on us. He's not going to give up on us. So why should we give up on him tonight? Why shouldn't we raise our hands and say, what a mighty God we serve tonight. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. If the angels can bow before him, so can I bow before him tonight. If angels can serve him, I can serve him tonight. This world is lost. We are living in a dying world. People need help, Sister Pat. We need help. There's people in this building tonight that have a beautiful outward appearance. 
But inside, there's so much turmoil. There's so much unsettlement. Come on. There's so much everything. You can, you can take a pig and purdy up a pig, yeah. but it's still going to be a pig no matter what you yeah, want right. to do with it. He'll go right back and waller in the same dirt, the same mess that he came out of. I'm telling you tonight, if you're in the midst of turmoil in your life and you're looking pretty in your little beautiful dress, I'm telling you, you can leave your turmoil at this place of, of rest Amen. tonight, Amen. at this place of safety tonight, Amen. because your God is in the midst of this place tonight. Lord, come on, come on. There's one more scripture I want to give you. It's in John the 20th chapter. Come on. When Sister Gloria was talking, I was thinking about this scripture. Yeah. When Jesus died and he came back, I'm going to kind of ease right here before I get too carried away. But when Jesus died, what did he do in the 20th chapter? Somewhere around the 19th verse, I believe it is. He, the, the disciples were where? They were behind closed doors, hiding from the enemy, wasn't they? Yes. Ain't that what the scripture says? Yeah. The same day in the evening, beginning the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples assembled for what? For the fear of the Jews. They were scared for their life, wasn't they? They were scared for their life, wasn't they? You ever been scared for your life? You ever been feared for your life? You ever been wondering what's going to happen? Sister Gloria, I've been there too, sister. Many, many Friday mornings I've laid on my face on my bed, called my mom on the phone, what in the world are we going to do? God, where are you today? You don't show up when you tell me you're going to show up. Oh, but in the just about the nick of time, brother, I'm standing behind closed doors, hiding from my enemy. And next thing you know, what happens? In the heart of Jesus Christ, in the middle of my trouble, in the middle of my sorrow, in the middle of me wondering, there stands Jesus right in the midst of us. And you know what he says? Peace. Be unto you. Has he ever said, Brother John, peace be unto you? Oh, brother, I'm telling you, I've been there too. God, where are you? I don't know where you're at, God, but I need you this very moment. I need your help right now, God. Oh, come on, come on, tonight, God. Come on, let's tell him the God. Brother, God knows what you need before you need it. You are very correct. Amen. But, brother, sometimes he wants to hear you say, I. That's all right. He loves you. He loves to hear you talk to him. He loves to hear you say, He loves to hear you say, God, will you help me? Yes. I have beautiful children and beautiful grandchildren. And there's nothing more than for one of them girls or that boy or one of my children to call and say, Dad, I need you. And I'm so graciously going there to help them out because it's Daddy. Because I know they're in need. And it's Pop, and I know that they're in need. So I'm going to go where the other day, what day was it? That, what day? Monday. When the world was coming to an end, we thought the tornado was going to tear us up, and the hurricane showed up all of a sudden. Remember all y'all, probably some of y'all were still sleeping, don't even know it came through, did you? That hurricane came through, and the torn. I was. I'm in Palmetto where the tornado was coming through, and I'm at home in my office, going, "Man, it, the, my my roof is going whoosh, uh, coming back down and sucking up and going down." I didn't know my wife and I hunkered Come down on. in the middle of the living room. Come said, on. "God, where are you?" In the midst of the storm. And on the other end of the phone, two of my girls were on the other end of the phone, saying, "Pop, we need you. Pop, we need you." We're hungry in the bathroom with both dogs. We need you to help us. And I said, I'm coming, baby. You just stay right there. I did everything I could to get out the door to get to where the girls were. Right. Until I opened the door and then the tornado was right on top of me. I said, whoa, I need to hold up. And so I called him and I said, girls, hunker. As soon as this thing passes, I'll be right there to help you. Man, when the thing passed over... You know how that thing it was. It was just as blurry and blustery as it could be. Five minutes later, it was as clear as it was. Crystal today is as hot as it was. Didn't even know nothing happened. Brother, I got in the truck and run right over there to where they were at. 
Are you guys okay? Or, yeah, we're good, Pop. It's all good. But, brother, it was just like God. Them girls were just like God when I needed. Lord, I need you right now. God, would you come and be a part of me? Lord, would you be in the midst of me? Lord, I need you in my trouble right now. The outside looks good, Lord, but the inside needs a little help. Can you help me in the midst of me tonight? Huh? Come on now. I didn't lose it, did I? I didn't lose it, did I? No. Oh, come on, ain't God good tonight? Yes. No, I'm not going to say it correctly. Ain't God good tonight? Yes. You can say it how you want it. Isn't God good? But I'm going to say, ain't God good tonight? Yes. Don't you appreciate God tonight? Don't you just appreciate the love of God? Yes. Come on, I want you to do me one more thing before I sit down. I want you to give God all your praise for just a minute. Come on, give God your praise for just a minute. Come on, he deserves our praise for a moment. God deserves our praises. The Bible said what? He in what? He inhabits the praises of his people. So if we'll start praising him, he'll inhabit us tonight. He'll be in the midst of us tonight. He's in the midst of us tonight. Come on, praise him. Don't give up. Come on, praise him some more. Your arms ain't tired. Your body's not tired. Your mouth ain't tired. You've still got breath. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him tonight. Come on, praise him tonight. He's in the midst of us tonight. Come on, he's in the midst of us tonight. Praise him. Come on, don't give up. Praise him. If you don't want to praise him, praise him anyhow. God is in the midst of us tonight. God is in the midst of us tonight. The Holy Spirit is in the midst of us tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, God is in the midst. Come on, praise him. Don't look at them. Praise God. Don't look at them. Praise God. How do you need help? Do you need help tonight? Do you need him tonight? He's right here in the midst of you. He's right here with you. Clean up the inside if you need it. Because he's here tonight to help you. Oh, my. 
not really had the experience before. Okay. And it's a little tough. And I know what Matthew's saying yes. when he's talking about when one of your one of your children or one of your grandchildren cry out. So uh, keep us in prayer because we're uh, we're losing, you know, a few of our grandchildren are moving out of state. That's something we're not used to. We're used to them being here. We're used to seeing them quite frequently and not having so many miles between us. But we know with God's help, well, we'll be able to overcome it. But if you would also pray Amen. for us to, to ease our pain. I appreciate it. We've had a good service. I felt the spirit of the Lord here tonight. Tomorrow we have the bilingual service, you know, here at the church at 10 o'clock. Build a bridge uh, we, over in Palmetto. They have their service tomorrow uh, at 10 o'clock also. And then Brother Stewart, you know, and the work down in Port Charlotte, and Sister Stewart, you know, the work down there. Anyone that uh, the bus leaves here at what time, Robbie? I'm sorry. The, the service down there is at 10. The van leaves at 8.45. So uh, we also have uh, uh, dinner in the dining room tomorrow. If uh, you, you know, would put on the board what, uh, what we can bring, uh, you know, we'll, we'll fellowship tomorrow on that. Be sure to pray for your pastor and, uh, and Brother Rose, Sister Marlowe, and uh, Brother Han. Uh, make sure that you keep them in prayer. And uh, there's stuff to bring tomorrow, the salad fixing, green beans, dinner rolls, and desserts. So that being said, if everyone would uh, just turn to one another, let's show some of that love that uh, has been talked about tonight. Reach out, shake hands with two or three people, and we'll see you tomorrow. We'll start this all over again.